This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Windows Azure. Today, we're packet sniffing! And no, it's not a black hat, man in the middle attack. If you're a network administrator or anyone who has to troubleshoot network issues, you should have a passive network tap in your toolkit. A network tap is basically a piece of hardware that lets you see the data flowing across a network. In a lot of cases, you can use a computer to monitor the traffic between two ports on a network, say between your router and a switch. Suffice it to say, if the network between points A and B are of the physical Ethernet cable variety, a network tap is the best way to take a look at the traffic. A tap has to be at least three ports, an A port, a B port, and some kind of monitor port. For example, the A port could be connected to the switch providing internet access, and the B port could be connected to the computer you'd like to monitor. And then the monitor port is just that. It's a port that lets you monitor what's right in between. Network taps are commonly used for network intrusion detection systems, VoIP recording, network probes, and packet sniffing, along with several other uses. Taps are used in security applications because they're not obtrusive, and in most cases, they aren't detectable on the network, and they can deal with full duplex connections. In our case, this network tap will work indefinitely since it doesn't even need power. Passive network taps are almost the same thing as a general network tap, except these do not need power, there is no built-in computer or any kind of moving parts, and it's just a few wires and connectors that will move data from one point all the way over to another. You can build a passive network tap for under 20 bucks from parts at your local hardware store. A while back, our friend Mike Osman built a 5-in-1 network admin cable that could do all sorts of stuff like serial console, crossover, and part of that was a passive network tap in a sort of throwing star design. Since then, the throwing star LAN tap has been born under the Great Scott Gadgets brand. This little guy is a small, simple device to monitor Ethernet communications. To the target network, the throwing star LAN tap looks just like a location or a section of cable, but the wires in the cable extend to the monitoring ports in addition to connecting to the target port to the other. You can use the star along with TCP dump or Wireshark or whatever your favorite packet sniffing program is to collect all of the data. Now, the throwing star comes with a kit, so you'll need to solder it together yourself, which is half the fun. Now I'm just going to get this finished turkey out of the way so I can work. The tap comes in seven pieces. The printed circuit board, four modular connectors, and two capacitors. Normal gigabit signals travel in both directions, and it's impossible to build a completely passive tap. There are gigabit taps, but they're like a thousand bucks, so yeah, no thanks. To overcome this limitation though, the throwing star gracefully degrades the signal with these two supplied capacitors that force the connection down to 100 megabits by adding a slight noise into the line. Unless you're using a really, really long cable, this shouldn't become an issue, and in most cases, the tap device will just drop down to 100 megabits without any trouble. You'll also need a soldering iron like my nifty little tool right here and some electrical solder. I'm using this Rosencore solder with flux built-in and a pair of wire cutters. Insert the four connectors into the circuit board. Be careful that each of the leads extends through the circuit board before snapping the connector fully into place. This is really important to do. I'll get that done. Now you'll need to insert the two capacitors through the circuit board as well. There we go. Now that I have everything in place, I'm going to go ahead and clip this onto my soldering kit. Once your soldering iron is hot enough, which mine feels pretty hot, you want to put a little bit of solder on the tip. Now this is called tinning, which prevents the tip from oxidizing. Oxidization is really bad because the solder won't adhere to oxidized surfaces. And then you want to solder all eight of the leads on the connectors and the leads on each capacitor and clip off the excess with wire cutters. All right, let's get to soldering. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There are 36 
six solder points on this board, which shouldn't take but just a few minutes once you get going. And with the board soldered, it's now time to start using it. So for the first part, I've gone ahead and asked Darren to play the victim here, and we'll start tapping his connection. Darren, come over here. Meow. What? What? A donkey? Oh, I guess that doesn't go meow. Darren's go up to donkey. No, All right. I don't think it does. Or maybe it's a horse. Yeah, you can do it. Anyway, All right. yes. So the first thing you need to do is connect the computer to the network through the throwing star in line on ports J1 and J2. J1 and J2 are listed on top of the little squares where you had put your network switches. The little so connectors. the internet is flowing this the way. The internet is flowing straight through. <laughs> and then you need to connect another ethernet cord to J3 and or J4, it doesn't really matter, and plug it into your computer that you'll be sniffing packets on. One's transmit, one's receive. Exactly. Next on your computer, set your ethernet adapter to promiscuous mode. Now to do this, in Linux, you'll ty type ifconfig, eth0, and promisc, and press enter. You can check that the adapter went into promiscuous mode by typing in ifconfig eth0 and then typing or looking for promisc. So ifconfig, eth0, and I look on here and I see promisc right in the middle there, so uh -oh. I'm good to go. Shannon's yeah. getting promiscuous. Uh oh. Now I need to fire up my favorite packet sniffer. I'm going to use Wireshark because it's built into Backtrack 5 already, so pff, why not? So the first thing you do is click on Applications, go over to Backtrack, go down to Information Gathering here at the top, Network Analysis, Network Traffic Analysis, and go to Wireshark. Then to start viewing the traffic, you e can either click on ETH0 down here, or you can go up to Capture and choose Interfaces. And once that's pulled up across from ETH0, I click Start. All right. See that uh, destination 8.8.8.8? That's, uh, I'm just running a that? constant ping right now. Oh, so, okay. There you go. So you're seeing. I'm seeing everything that's going through your computer right now, all the things that you are sending out. Okay. Yeah, for example, um, go ahead and pull up IRC on your mm -hmm. machine. And on my machine, I'm going to filter IRC. All right. Okay, so we see IRC, a whole bunch of requests, a whole bunch of Whatever stuff. Whatever the latest Oh, I just one saw one pull up. Let's look down at Hey, guys. You just send that? Hey, guys. Oh, it's working. So, yeah, as long as it works correctly and you plugged in everything and soldered it right, you should be able to see everything that's going through here. Shannon is sniffing my packets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can also, uh, basically, if you want to sniff both sides, you can either use two computers or if you have two Ethernet interfaces. I like using like a USB uh, Ethernet oh, interface. Right. Uh, and then Since you, you don't actually have two different ports on your machine, right? Right, yeah. And the other nice thing about that is you can do it in a VM or if you, uh, and it's pretty easy, you just either fire up two copies of Wireshark or TCP two dump, whatever TCP you want. Dumps. You can use Wireshark to combine a PCAP that's been individually recorded. Can you do Wireshark recorded. and TCP dump? You could do that. Two separate ones? Or you could actually just turn them both into a bridge and then just listen to the bridge and you'd ah. have both things just as you normally would. Yeah, it's nice though to nice. see. It's, very it's amazing how much you would get just on looking at what's being sent out. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Now, for links on how to build your own network tab from scratch, you can check out all of our show notes over at hack5.org or by a throwing star land tap. You can head over to hackshop.com, H A K shop.com. Woohoo! Awesome. Now, coming up soon, we'll be taking wireless D auth attacks, but first, let's take a break and then check in with Darren for the nibbles. <laughs> We all know that most guys hate shopping for clothes. You gotta leave the house, go to the store, look all over the place for like one or two cool things. <sighs> Luckily, that era is over now that we have Jack Threads. Jack Threads is a members only online shopping club that does the dirty work for you and saves you a boatload of cash. Each day, Jack Threads serves up the hottest deals on new and indie brands at huge discounted prices. We're talking like 80% off what you'd pay in the store and they've got amazing brands like Kid Robot, The Hundreds, and American Apparel for less than what you'd find anywhere else. Now, Jack Threads is a private club, but luckily, Hack 5's got the hookup for you. To get access to these awesome deals, just go over to jackthreads.com slash H-A-K-5 and you'll get to skip the waiting list and become a member like right now, like right away. Oh, and did we mention that it's free to join? Yeah, hit up jackthreads.com slash H-A-K-5 and you'll instantly start saving up to 80% without even having to leave the house. You just stay home, naked, buying clothing. 
clothing so you won't be naked. Stop being naked. I love Chrome, you love Chrome. Well, maybe love Opera, I mean, nothing wrong with that. But if a page starts harshing on your vibe in Chrome, go ahead and kill it with this killer keyboard combo. Shift Escape here brings up the Chrome's built-in task manager, clueing you into all sorts of details about every tab's memory, CPU, and network usage. Right clicking gives you a whole bunch of nitty gritty detail and there's even a stats for nerds link that'll bring you to about colon memory for more than you ever wanted to know about how that flash game's robbing your resources. Sorry, Adobe, just saying. Uh, you know the drill, hack5.org slash nibble. Best one, get some goodies from the hack shop.